Hi friends, Max Elhaj here. On this episode of the Corpus Animus podcast, we have training think tank athlete, Lauren Fisher. You guys probably all know her. I learned more about her in this one hour podcast than I probably knew about her from our two months working together. Listen up and let, listen up. That's it. That's all I got. That's the end of it. Listen up. Train along some of the best athletes in the world at the sport of CrossFit. To get a free sample week of our current training cycle, head over to trainingthinktank.com slash DSGN. Your mom's bad with names. Yeah, so my mom's bad with names. She can't pronounce names. She's going to listen to this and feel bad about it. Oh, she's going to, she's probably going to (laughs) laugh. She's going to be like, oh, sis. She calls me sis. She'll say something funny. (laughs) She calls you sis? Yeah. Has that just been a nickname forever? I don't know, just because I'm like her little sis. And I'll, I told this to Alexis. I was like, probably on the ruck run, my mom would be like, go, sis, go. <laughs> and Alexis was like, oh my gosh, my mom says the same thing. No <laughs> <Yeah>. way. <laughs> so her mom calls her sis too. <laughs> I'm like, I feel like this is a mutual connection. <laughs> I feel like Alexis and I are almost the same person a little yeah. bit sometimes. <laughs> kind of like you're, you don't have any sisters, no, right? No, no sisters. Mm-hmm. And you both live together in yeah. the same house. <laughs> Yeah. Is Perrin like a second mom Perrin. or a second sister? Basically, I feel like almost both. Second mom, second sister. Perrin's been amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So Lauren, welcome to the podcast. Perrin, welcome back to the podcast. Thank you. I didn't invite you, but <laughs> just kidding. That's my fault. <laughs> my bad. <laughs> um, yeah. So you moved out here in, what was it? Right after quarterfinals. It was Literally, like the day after like- quarterfinals. It was the week after quarterfinals. Let's get it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's get this straight <laughs> yeah. now. It doesn't matter. Day, Be more clear with Day or week after. Literally, I think right after quarterfinals, I moved out here and I've been here since. So I haven't been home in San Diego for two months, uh, yeah. which is crazy. Yeah. So you moved in with Perrin. Perrin was like, yeah, she could live with me. I was like, all right. <laughs> I, I feel like it all happened so quickly. I was like texting Noah about coming out here. And then all of a sudden, before you know it, he was connecting me with you, Max. And we were on the phone. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, I'm messaging Perrin for a place to live. I didn't even know Perrin. I was, I had to ask, I had to ask Noah. I was like, is Perrin a cool chick? Like, I don't really know this girl. Moving into a crazy I moved, house. Yeah. And Noah's like, Perrin's the best. She's so awesome. So I was like, okay, I'm going to take your word for I, this. I have a pro tip for you with Noah. Never take his, he likes but, everyone. Yeah. But so. then I, he just to realize, happened to be lucky. Yeah, Noah likes everyone, as I've come to realize. So he could have said that about anyone. Yeah, and she a been, serial killer. And she Noah's in there <laughs> eating breakfast with him. She's fine. Yeah, <laughs> yeah literally. Some dead people on the floor, but she seems like a nice person. Yeah, so I had to ask Noah, but no himself. Don't ask Noah for anything. <laughs> and then, yeah, I literally moved, or I bought a plane ticket. And I was like, Terasmus, I guess it's happening. Like, I just bought a plane ticket. We're going out to or I'm going out to Georgia and he came out with me and literally it just all happened so quickly. Knew no one, but Noah. Yeah. And I barely even knew Travis a little bit, um, obviously from competitions. And then I didn't know Alessandra. So I had messaged her that I was coming out and she was like super excited. Um, oh, she needed that. <laughs> yeah. She, she needs like yeah. another it's a boys club the, here. Yeah, the way that the training environment molded, it was like Alessandra came out here and was already pretty quiet naturally and it was all just these loud male personalities <laughs> she was like in the corner i was like we need more elite females here <laughs> yeah so and it just happened to work out i think she was really excited <laughs> to have me out here and then i came out here and then before you know it, alexis moves out a week later i didn't even know alexis she moves into the same home as parent and my parents like hey do you mind if this other girl alexis comes into the house and i'm like yeah i mean what can i else can i say <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Yeah. And then Alexis moves out here. And then before you know, it, we had like Jordan Adcock out here, Caroline Dardini, and it became like a girls club over like boys. And yeah, it was really fun. Yeah. All right. So that's the present moment. I want to yeah. rewind time. So people have asked in the comments pretty much since they saw your picture out here, they wanted to know your story and hear about your CrossFit journey. All I know is you started sports basketball when you were young. Yeah. So I've been doing sports my entire life. Um, literally did any like swimming, 
basketball, gymnastics, softball, tennis. Um, so I played all type of sports growing up. Um, I told you this yesterday, Max. I was 10 years old. I had my own personal trainer. Um, I don't know if a lot of you know, but University of Pacific in Stockton, California, they had like a little like training facility. And so me and my brothers, we went to go train with a personal trainer. We would do parachute drills, ladder drills, um, just some like basic strength work at 10 years old. And my dad also, he was super competitive and doing a lot of the workouts on men's health magazines. And so I would always jump in with him on the workouts for men's health and he actually um, had me do 100 push-ups, 100 sit-ups every single day. And I actually got a little, like, stipend from it. It was like, <laughs> my if I hit, nice. I would, like, check off on a calendar if I did my 100 push-ups and 100 sit-ups. And I got paid for it. So you were it, a professional athlete at 10. Yeah, basically. <laughs> when I was 10 years old. crushing up. sit-ups. Yeah, crushing sit-ups. I actually did over 100 push-ups and broken. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So I started really young and then got into high school, still playing basketball. I wanted to go on to play in college, go on to the WNBA. And I started training at CrossFit 209 in Stockton with Gabe Subri and Vince Carter because of my two brothers. Wait a minute. Vince not Carter. That Vince Carter. Yeah, not, not the basketball. Not Vince Carter. Vince Carter, the basketball <laughs> player. And actually funny story about that. I, my brothers were like, Hey, come train with us. We're going to train with Vince Carter. I was like, Vince Carter, the basketball <laughs> player. And they're like, yeah, Vince Carter, the basketball player. I get there. I was like, it's not Vince Carter, the basketball <laughs> wrong player. Wrong dude. Yeah. Wrong dude. But <laughs> I have a friend who used to be his chef. That's, a, that's the closest I got to For him. real? Yeah. <laughs> That's Shout out so, Brandy. Yeah. yeah, that's funny. Uh, yeah. So anyways, I went out there and I was literally just training with all the boys. I felt like every single day it was like me and 10 football players <laughs> training every single day. Did so many like box jumps, back squats, deadlifts. I actually did not start out like clean and jerking and snatching until maybe like three years later because I kept telling uh, Vince, I was like, I don't want to get like too bulky <laughs> and too muscular for basketball. And Vince was like, okay, okay, Lauren, but you're not going to get too bulky and too muscular. And I was like, I don't want to do it. So I didn't start like snatching and clean and jerking until like three years later. So I was just doing basic stuff. And then, um, literally 2012 or 2011, my junior year of high school is when Gabe Subri came up to me and was like, Hey Lauren, like, I think you have the potential to go to the CrossFit games one day. I think you can be as good as Julie Fache, Camille. I like had watched these like muscle up videos of Camille. Like I idolized her like so many of these big girls. And I was like, really? Like me? Like you think I can be as good as these girls? He's like, yeah. He's like, I want you to start like coming during the summer and training with us. So I got invited to train with like the top guys at CrossFit 2 and I was like so excited. So literally that's my summer. Like I spent training two hours a day though. It wasn't like double sessions back in my junior year of high school. And then I went on to compete at 2012 regionals. I took 12th. I was like the young 17 year old girl versus like these top well-known people, Jenny Labaugh, um, Annie Sakamoto, like all these OG athletes who probably Alexis Raptus doesn't even yeah. know who these <laughs> girls are. Um, and so I took 12th place and that was kind of when the fire was lit. And then hold on, how old were you then? 17 or 18 oh, senior okay. year of high school. Oh, cool. Um, and that's when I actually met CJ Martin at that regionals and Gabe had introduced me to CJ and he was like, Hey, Lauren's this young athlete. Um, she's coming out to San Diego and needs a place to train. And CJ was like, yeah, she's more than welcome to come out here. And so literally, hold on, hold on. pause, yeah. pause. Yeah. Oh. How long have you been here? I've been here for two months. two months. Two months. All right. Two months, right? You ever go to like, you have a water hose back in the day, like at the garden, you water in your garden outside. <laughs> you ever like take the water hose and like bend it and like the water can't come out and your hose is like no water's coming yeah. out and then you let it go and it's just like, <laughs> I feel like that is what's happening right now. What? Like, two was... months, you haven't said shit. You're like the most professional person in the gym. You just get to work and do whatever. And then right now, you, we don't even need these people. You can do this podcast by yourself. I was thinking about it. She was going to tell the whole story and I was like, I'm just going to patiently wait for her to finish. And then when she finished, we're like, all right, well, there's her whole story. <laughs> Thanks the the podcast, podcast is over. <laughs> yeah. We're done. I love Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Continue. Yeah, hold on, hold on. I actually did want to cut you off, okay. but I didn't want okay. to cut you off. Okay. You talked about like a thousand different things. I know. So. I basically <laughs> tried to give you my life story in like five minutes. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> so uh, your whole family, I know Garrett was a games athlete. Was he in CrossFit before you got into CrossFit? Were your parents into CrossFit? Uh, so Garrett got in, well, he was into CrossFit two weeks before me. And oh, okay. then it was actually my brother, Ryan, and my brother, Garrett. So I grew up with three older brothers, Andrew, Ryan, and Garrett. Um, yeah, youngest girl and a family of four, as you can imagine. <laughs> that's kind of why I'm super competitive. 
negative <laughs> and I won't take anything from anyone. Like I ju that just started from a young age. Literally, we'd be playing like a game of Monopoly or Marco Polo and like we would all just go at it and we would like call each other out. I'm like, you're cheating. <laughs> they would be like, no, you're cheating. And oh then, shit, if you're getting competitive Marco Polo, <laughs> you yeah, know. Yeah, literally, I'd be like, your eyes are open on Marco Polo. And they would always say then I would cheat. Literally, I was like thrown in the bushes when we were playing basketball. And I think that's kind of how it all started. Like I would literally, I would go into my mom, I'd be crying and I'd be like, they threw me into the bushes. And my mom would be like, well, you either need to like wipe your tears and go back out and play with them. Or you can stay in here with me and keep crying. And then I would just like, wipe my tears and I would go back out and play with them and so that's kind of this like, is my favorite podcast so, <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of like where it all started yeah so Garrett uh, competed at the CrossFit Games in 2013 which I actually competed on the team as well Team Invictus um, and then Garrett yeah he went on he took fifth place and everyone knew my brother everyone knew my brother Garrett Fisher so that's kind of where the name Little Fish started because I was like Little Fisher, Garrett's younger sister. Uh, I, I remember in 2013, they just kept saying, like, Garrett's little sister. I'm like, I have a name. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, literally, that's all they kept saying. And so, um, yeah, Garrett trained at NorCal CrossFit with Jason Kalipa. And I actually wanted to go to Santa Clara University. I didn't get in. And I was, like, so bummed because I wanted to go train with Garrett mm. and Jason and Miranda Oldroyd, like, the whole crew down there. So I would just take random visits every now and then to go train with them, which I think like helps so much because Jason is just like so knowledgeable. So like I learned a lot from him and he was pretty funny. There's like some funny stories like training with them as well. Like one, I, yeah, that's just another story. No, no, I want to hear that story <laughs> it too. Like, yeah. It was like me, it was me, Miranda, Molly Vollmer and China Cho and then Garrett and Jason. And we were all training and Jason, of course, does these like crazy emoms. And we did this like crazy emom with these power cleans. And China, Molly, Miranda, they all like dropped the bar during this <laughs> emom. I was the only person that kept going unbroken. And then after Jason was like, you guys need to toughen up a little bit more. The only person that went unbroken here was Lauren. You guys need to not drop the barbell. Like I was like, I was like this like young 18 year old girl. And I was like, I'm so glad I didn't drop the barbell. And <laughs> so glad yeah, you didn't he get was shamed. like, he was like so mad at like Molly, Miranda and China for dropping the bar. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, Jason was really cool. And so long story short. Yeah. Garrett competed at the CrossFit games. My brother, Ryan actually played professional baseball for the Miami Marlins. He was in the minor leagues, but never made it on. Um, and then my brother Andrew's a big triathlete so he's done an Ironman he's done half Ironman like he's so into running biking um, and swimming like he's so good at it so you look at him he's like long and skinny and then like me and Garrett we're just I mean we all kind of have very similar like aesthetics and looks it just really depends how yeah. we train and then my brother Ryan he did a little bit of crossfit but he's always like CrossFit makes you too like muscular for baseball. I can't really swing when I'm like doing CrossFit. So he's like fully into like bodybuilding and stuff, but he cool. like wants to like get lean now. And we're like, just do CrossFit. Like <laughs> he like, yeah. So he's funny, but yeah, all of us have some sort of athletic background. And then we got my mom into CrossFit as well. Like two years later, she could barely do like single under. She could barely jump up to like a six inch box. And now she can do like box jumps and all of that. Very cool. um, and then my dad, he's obviously been super active his whole life as well. And he doesn't do CrossFit, but we have a whole home gym. He'll like just casually do like a skier, like a 5k skier, like for time and I'm like dad you know who does this <laughs> or just like go and row like a 5k like he's like oh I just like rode for an hour today or I just like biked and I'm like dad who does this for fun like so yeah my dad is retired now and like his like morning is spent like he'll work out for an hour and then he'll go do sauna ice bath and so it's living just the dream yeah, yeah. living the dream so <laughs> I, it's good. honestly kind of all like ingrained to me the way my yeah. parents were where my brothers were and so that's yeah. That's my family in a nutshell. Yeah, we're gonna have all of your things. Like, you got any pets? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, the family dynamic. Were you guys all like just athletic right off the bat, or you guys were encouraged to do athletics? Um, I don't think we were. I mean, I don't. 
think we're all like athletic off the back. Like I think we were encouraged to do athletics, but we were never like forced to do it. And I think it started from my brother, Andrew. Like he's the oldest. He's the oldest. He was like so hardcore. Just like he would like for bath. He played basketball. He would literally have a whole like sheet of like drills he would do before school at 7 a.m. to like perfect his shot and stuff. And then it just, and he would get straight A's and he was like super great in school. And I think that just kind of rubbed off on all the rest of us kids. And so like, I just did sports because my brothers did it. And so I would even go to their baseball and basketball practices. And like, literally like I would be like playing with the boys from like a very young age. Yeah. When was the transition from like you said before your childhood dream was to play in the WNBA and you played basketball. When did you transition to think like, okay, I'm a CrossFit athlete now first. Yeah. So that happened my junior year of high school. I was starting to get burnt out. So my team, like we won back-to-back state championships. We were actually by ESPN. We were like literally ranked number one in the nation. And so it was a very hardcore like basketball team, like literally our coach wouldn't take anything. I've never like played for a more elite school. Like if you were late to practice, we would be running drills for literally like 30 minutes and you had to hit a certain time. And if you didn't hit the certain time for the sweet 16, we just run it again. And so people were like throwing up, like it was so hardcore. Like literally if you missed a layup in the warm up, our coach would get so mad. He would like shake his head. And so there came a point when I was just getting like so burnt out with basketball. And I just like, I came to found CrossFit and I was like, this really fulfills my competitiveness that like I couldn't get when I'm not playing basketball. And I ended up doing a CrossFit competition, my junior year of high school, which actually was the same time as a basketball game that was going to be aired on ESPN. We were like playing Bishop O'Dowd or something. And I told my coach, I was like, Hey, I want to go to this CrossFit competition, um, this weekend, but I'm going to miss the game at Bishop O'Dowd, he was like so disappointed in me. He's like, you're going to be benched for two weeks. He's like, do you realize this is probably going to be the only time you're going to be on ESPN? And he's like, what is this? He's like, what is this CrossFit going to do for you? Like in the future, like basketball is like your life. And I, I literally, I said, I'm going to go do this CrossFit competition. And I did it. And I had so much fun. I was like, this is what I want to do. And I came back and I was benched and I was like, so disappointed. I was just like, I'm literally just like, Oh, like I'm over basketball. Like I just want to pursue this CrossFit thing. And so that's when the following year competed in regionals, the open, I just had so much fun. And I was like, I had got some offers from some schools, but I was like, I don't want to go to college to play basketball. Like I want to go to college and I want to do CrossFit. And so that was kind of like the turning point of my career. And it's funny looking back and I, when my coach had said, like, what is this CrossFit going to do for you? That was almost like a fire that had lit in me. And I had and wanted to, like, prove to my coach. And even back in high school, I was made fun of for doing CrossFit. A lot of the guys said I was too bulky, too muscular. They thought I was on steroids. They said, like, all these mean things to me. And literally no one understood, like, why I did CrossFit. And now it's just cool to see how much CrossFit has given me. Like, I've traveled the world. I've been sponsored by Nike. Like, all of these, like, amazing things have happened because of CrossFit. And I've met so many amazing people. And so it's just, like, really cool to see how much, like, it has brought into my life. The, um, you played basketball, which is a team sport you transitioned into CrossFit as an individual athlete, moved into it as a team athlete, and then did this year again as an individual athlete. What, what do you like better or what is it just different depending on the year and the people you're with or? Um, it really depends on the year and the people you're with. You never like being on a team where you know there is a weaker link. Like I, cause I just have that winning like winning desire in my mind. Like I literally want to have a team that I know we're going to like put our best foot forward and like, we're going to go out there and win. And I know also too individually by myself, like it really just depends on me and my own abilities. And so like, you have to love the team you're with, like you have to sacrifice everything to be on the team. And I think in 2019, when I was on the team with Tommy Reagan and Rass, it was probably some of the most fun I've had in a long time. And I think cause we were all just almost like family. Like we would literally, I mean, there was times when there was tears, we were crying, yelling at each other, but like looking back at some of like the best memories being on that team. And I think it also helped that we did really well. Um, and then individually, like I've also had some of the best years of my life as well, competing by myself, but it's just like so different. And I think 
think for me, the training environment is kind of what makes it everything. And I think the past two months here, I've been so lucky to be able to train with Travis and get to know him more, train with Noah, Sandra, and just the whole group here. Like it's been so much fun. So it almost feels like a family. And when we went out to West Coast Classic and to know that there's like 10 other people, like literally there's so many training think tank athletes there, knowing that like we're all have been in this together. Like it was pretty something special. So just, I like both. It really depends on who you're with. Yeah. Parent, do you have any good stories from living with Lauren for the last two months? <laughs> I feel like you have to be able to have some words on the podcast. <laughs> I know. I'm just Sorry. enjoying Sorry, this. I've just been talking no. the whole time. No, it is funny, though, that I feel like Chris's analogy is accurate. Is. She can be very quiet, and then we're yeah. like, explosion. <laughs> this has um, all been going yeah. on in there the whole time. I mean, but I, I didn't know a lot of these things. It's actually funny because um, her and I and Sandra and Akeem had dinner last night. And both of them were sharing stories. Sandra had a lot of stories. It was just, I think I mean, bring just, her back yeah. home to get some of those That's stories. exactly what I said. I was like, you need to do another one to find well, no, no. more podcasts. Sandra doesn't know that she's moving here yet. I know. Yeah. Well, we tried to convince her yeah. again. Oh, that's happening. Um, but I mean, living, living with both of them, I think has just been an awesome experience. It was kind of weird because I, I mean, I moved, I moved here in January. I just started yeah. working here. Yeah. There was a I'm lot of trust. I was looking into. for a house and I moved into my house. And then like a day later, Jordan and Spencer came to stay with me. They left and then Lauren came the next day and then Alexis came the next week. So it's kind of been crazy, like trying to settle into the home. You haven't but, lived by yourself. Then you no. give up your <laughs> own bed. Yeah. I have I slept on an Parent, air mattress Parent, for a little while. Perrin, funny story, Perrin gave me her mattress to sleep on. So she slept on an air mattress for like the first week and I slept on like her mattress. It's fine. <laughs> Perrin fine. is such a mom. She's such a mom. But um, no, I mean, both of them, they're just extremely dialed in their habits and their food and their downtime and recovery. And they take it very seriously. Like I would be like, Hey guys, let's watch a movie or something. And they'd both be passing out like 30 minutes into it. Like, okay, it's sweet Saturday night. <laughs> but, um, I mean, we, unfortunately we didn't get too many opportunities. I feel like to like hang out too much, but we did spend a lot of time together and they were just, really fun too many to opportunities to hang out we had like a ice a, just a normal like ice bath night every single night where okay. we would hang out well like a normal i guess you're yeah, saying yeah, normal. Like a, we're not like normal. normal like go, go to the movies our, yeah, yeah. Normal. Yeah. Well, there's nothing normal about our night like we would take an ice bath and then i'd be like okay let's go drink tea <laughs> ginger tea and let's take like a 10 minute walk outside to lower our cortisol and then we would just all be walking around parents yard because you can't really walk anywhere yeah in the middle of the dark and then we will come back in and then Alexis and I would be like doing yoga yoga <laughs> we do like happy's babies pose and parents just like working on her laptop just like these girls <laughs> I well, mean that's what it takes to be I, a high yeah, level athlete yeah. I've said I've always wanted to adopt children because I'm adopted and I feel like I got an experience and now I can check that box <laughs> I'm, I'm done, done. <laughs> <laughs> I did it yeah um you competed in weightlifting as well as CrossFit yeah what's like the how did you pick between the two and what was like your biggest accomplishment in weightlifting? So I competed in weightlifting, man, it's been so long ago, <laughs> 2014, 2015, I believe. And it was CrossFit came first. And then, um, I actually met this girl, Jess Lucero, who is really big into weightlifting. And she was like, Lauren, like, I think you could compete in weightlifting. Like she thought like my form on my clean and jerk and snatch was really good. And so she was like, you should compete at junior nationals. And I signed up for junior nationals, literally had no idea what I was doing. Uh, when I went to that competition for my first time, and like junior nationals was your first competition. USA. Yeah. Junior national Where championships. Was that at? Uh, I think it was in Colorado. I don't know if Colorado was the first year or if it was somewhere else, but I ended up taking second place <laughs> in the, uh, overall. And I'm Oops. like, I didn't even know uh -oh. what <laughs> I didn't even know what I was doing. And then I ended up getting invited to go to the Olympic training center, um, for a week and do a week camp. And that was really awesome and really cool. Like I felt like I learned so much in the one week I was there, uh, with Zygmunt, the coach and just like learning like small things I wouldn't have learned if I didn't do it. And so, yeah, I went to OTC and then after that I was like, I'm going to compete. In I had one more year of junior national championships. And so I did it another year and I took first place overall. I was best overall lifter in like all of the weight classes as well. 
And that was just so much fun. And then I ended up getting invited to compete on Team USA, uh, the junior team at the World Championships, which was actually the same year as the 2014 CrossFit Games. So I went to Russia like a month before the CrossFit Games in 2014. I competed there. I took 10th place overall. I think I... Uh, did really well in the clean and jerk, but my snatch has always been like my weaker movement. And then, um, yeah, competed there. I did junior Pan American championships, uh, university world championships. So it was like two years where I competed in weightlifting. And it was kind of, it was really hard though to do both CrossFit and weightlifting because nowadays you literally have to do one or the other. You can't do yeah. both. Like the girls in weightlifting have gotten so strong. And so for and, me and the girls in CrossFit have and, gotten so fit. Yeah, The so. girls in CrossFit have gotten so fit. So it's like, you can't do both. And I was just like, I really enjoyed CrossFit more than weightlifting. I loved weightlifting because I love just being able to like go in and try to set a PR and lift as heavy as possible. You don't have to breathe heavy. Like it was just, I'm like, this is so much fun. But then I just, I love the variety of CrossFit. Yeah. And so I, I ended up sticking with CrossFit and haven't done weightlifting since, but, um, yeah, it's so, it was so much fun and I learned so much and I think it carried over to my background in CrossFit, having that weightlifting, uh, background a little bit. What were your biggest in competition lifts? Um, I, I actually clean and jerked 110 kilos, 242 pounds back in 2014. And I think now my max is 111 kilos <laughs> and then, uh, snatch. My best snatch was I think 80 kilos in competition. So 175. And what was it in training? Cause you hit a PR in I training I hit a here. PR 190 pounds. So I think that was like 86 kilos or something like that. So what was the time between that PR and. And the last one you had had. Yeah. So I had been stuck at 83, which is 183 pounds for like, I told you for like five years or something like that. <laughs> That's all I could hit. And then all of a sudden I come here and two weeks later, I PR my snatch at 190 pounds. And I'm like, where'd this come from? And it Aaron, felt, it came from Perry. It felt so easy too. I wish we had like five more minutes on the clock. Cause I think I would have hit 195 that day. Yeah. Yeah. That was a, that was a, it was a throwdown, right? It yeah, was a handstand we walk. Rode, and we had row, it was row one K into a handstand walk right after. And yeah. then, I always snatch better under fatigue. I'm like, I just need to like row and bike beforehand and then go snatch. Did we get the, did we get the snatch on tape? Yeah. Yeah. You we did? Yeah, yeah. You posted it. Oh, okay. Yeah. I have a cool real video. Yeah. You can use. Scroll down and find yeah. it. Yeah. You can just find it on my IG. Perfect. Uh, what was your first couple of weeks impression when you came on site and actually got to witness and experience oh, Travis, yeah, be honest and Travis and Noah. Um, <laughs> I was actually, well, before I got here, I was like so nervous. I'm just like the type of person I get like, I'm like really shy until you get to meet me and then I'll just like talk your ear off, <laughs> which is kind of what you guys are seeing, <laughs> which is what you're seeing on this podcast, I guess. Uh, but I was like so nervous before I got here and then everyone was like so nice and welcoming and I'm like, I think this is going to be a fun few weeks, like fun few months of yeah. training. And literally, I think my first impression, like, I was like, everyone said Noah was really late, but literally <laughs> when I, we started out, Noah was on time. So I was like, why is everyone saying that Noah Olson is really late? Because he's been on time. Yeah. And you saw once we stopped the whole, once group we training. stopped the whole group training <laughs> kind of went off on our separate, like semifinal training pass. Noah was always late. <laughs> Never, I'm like, but I heard you, you I, had a problem with I lateness. also have been really late. So <laughs> yeah. when I, she said that's so shameful. <laughs> I remember <laughs> when we had that first meeting and Max was saying about like the priorities of the group training and kind of just the goals and he was like one of them was like don't be late and I looked over at Rasmus and I kind of made a face and he made a face at me and Max had known because after we had met he's like I saw you made a face about being late and I was like yeah I'm notorious for being late over at Invictus and so that was just like one thing you and Noah kindred spirits but kindred spirits but then I don't know what it was that here I think it was maybe living with Alexis like it just kind of built this new habit and new routine of me being on time and I'm like wow this only took me like nine years to figure out <laughs> like you need to set the time when you're leaving not the actual time when you need to be there yes. and so it's be like we alexis would be like okay we need to leave at 8 15 be like she'd be like okay we, i'm gonna get up at this time and i'm like okay because usually i think about it like i need to be here at this time and that's why i'm late because yeah, i don't yeah. I, don't, I need to be there at 8 15 i'm uh, gonna yeah. get up then yeah i don't like set a time to leave and so that yeah. has really helped but anyways yeah and then travis has been hilarious i have literally never laughed 
so much with someone. And like, I kind of knew people who said that he was a jokester. And I think Perrin had said, oh, Travis was a little bit nervous. He's not too sure about how to like crack jokes around you. Like he doesn't know what you can take and what you cannot take. <laughs> and I think immediately when I got there, Travis just started cracking jokes. And it's just been like so much fun. He's like, your biggest advocate. Yeah, for your he's the biggest advocate. <laughs> for he's like your manager he's now. the biggest advocate for Grown Strong. I feel like he can sell anything. He's just like, he's so awesome. And it's so cool. Like he's a family of four and they have three boys and one girl. And I'm like, this is like identical to my family. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. with the three boys and one girl. So it's just like cool to see like what he's like able to do in the sport despite having a family of four. Um, yeah. And then Sandra, like I haven't really gotten to train with her too much until recently. And Sandra also can kind of talk your ear off too once you get to know her. And <laughs> I didn't realize it, this. I, I understood yesterday when we had our like post season review, I was like, Oh, Lauren talks a lot more than I had yeah. thought. And she's got a lot going on in there. <laughs> yeah. Sandra, I had a weekly call with her before she moved here. So I think November until when did she move here? Uh, in the middle of the open. Yeah. So probably for three or four months, I had a weekly call with her and Akeem together, we would talk. And I think in that entire time, <laughs> I maybe heard her say like 150 words. And then Chris was like, Hey, we're going to do a podcast with Sandra. I was like, I feel like I'm going to have a hard time, like getting it up out of it. We no, had a I podcast knew she was gonna talk. and she like, <laughs> I was like, what the hell's going on? But uh, this is at least I, the second time I've realized yeah, it. Yeah. I call, I call Sandra, Sandra, the wise. <laughs> she, she just has like all of this, like just knowledgeable, just like you don't really hear it. And then all of a sudden she starts talking and I'm like, wow, you're like, <laughs> like so wise and so inspirational. She's awesome. Yeah. So everyone has just been like so amazing here. And it's just, I honestly, I didn't really know what I was walking into. And I think the coaches to the training think tank team, like everyone has just been like so welcoming and so nice. So it was just like a really like great experience. And like, I'm excited for like the future ahead. Yeah. Well, we're still not done with the past. We want to talk about the competition. So yeah. our goals this year, well, do you want to talk about kind of what you had wanted to do? Yeah. So I guess in our first meeting, I had told Max that my goal is to make it back to the games to get top 10 at games. And that ended all too quickly this season. But I honestly felt like I was in the best shape. I felt the strongest. Just like overall, I haven't felt this good in a long time. And so I don't think my the competition performance really justified kind of what we had been doing the past two months. So it's really hard to kind of define one weekend and say this one weekend defines you as the person you are, or defines yeah. you as uh, fit enough to go to the CrossFit Games because I feel like it's so far from it. And there was just like, so many hiccups and bumps along the weekend. I think Max got the full, <laughs> got the full Lauren Fisher because she can be very emotional at times. And yeah. there was a whole lot of tears. Yeah. And I'm like, I feel bad for you right now. Yeah, she said that. I'm like, don't feel bad for me. I'm like, yeah. we need to get yeah. through this together. Yeah. 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 So, um, uh, that's kind of, it was my goal and it fell short, but, um, I think maybe it was kind of a blessing in disguise and everything kind of happens for a reason. Yeah. So the first event didn't start as optimal as we did it in training. We had a training run of it, which was great. Good yeah. confidence boost that gone into it. And then you kind of jam your elbow. Yeah. So good that. that first event, I felt something <clears throat> weird on the 155 pound snatch in my elbow. And I was like, something's wrong. Like I just knew it. I felt it immediately. And it was like, I knew I'd train it literally every single snatch after that hurt so bad. And then I ended up missing one at 165, like lack of focus. And I think thinking about what was going on with my elbow and I ended up, I was ended up completing the whole thing. But after literally I got done with it and I think I had like turned to you guys and I'm like, I hurt my elbow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then great, great start to the weekend. Yeah. And then like literally right after that event, I could barely straight in it and we could barely do like one rope climb in the warm up area and the thrusters just hurt so bad and one workout I was like really looking forward to because I had done it in practice I think we had done it on the 15 foot rope in like 551 and then I had done it once on the fit or sorry 14 foot rope and then one time on the 15 foot in like 18 eight sorry eight something and then I was like I feel like I'm going to be like a whole lot faster in competition and my elbow just hurt so bad. And I ended up completing at seven 30, which I think was good, but I no. maybe think I could have been better. And then, um, just kind of like a rocky start to the weekend. And then after that, it was like kind of downhill, just like emotionally, like thinking to myself, wow, you do not expect like everything you had worked for to 
then all of a sudden kind of fall apart by an injury that you didn't even expect. Like I knew there was going to be some workouts that wouldn't go my way during the weekend, but to have this kind of at the back of my head and I was seriously an emotional mess. I, on Friday, parent kind of saw it. Like I was just like crying so much. And I think too, like Max, you had told me like, you needed to like stop thinking about your elbow and giving power to your elbow. And I think it was really hard to bounce back from that. And then the ruck run. Uh, sorry, I'm just like talking rather than you guys like answering my question. I don't know. I don't you're even know. This. I don't even know if you wanted me to go through the whole weekend. Yeah. I wasn't thinking out of it, but you're uh, already no, on a roll. Uh, uh, well, anyways, <laughs> yeah. So the weekend just yeah. didn't go the way I wanted. Yeah. But you bounced back on but, day uh, three, really. Yeah, well. bounced back on day three. I just kind of came in and just did my thing, and I think that's when I performed the best. I was a little bit upset about the last workout. Um, I fell through the rings at twelve muscle ups, yeah. and then. And I missed a clean at 190, but that was a workout I sh should have won. Uh, we did 123 in practice, and then it's a little bit different when you get out there. But I think, yeah, end of the week and still on a high, though, with yeah. that workout. Yeah, so competition, I feel like a lot of times, any competitive athlete, I f feel like even me as a coach, I – I feel pain almost when an athlete is training all year, goes to do something and doesn't have the experience they want to put it into practice. But I feel like also losing helps with teaching lessons about how to become a better competitor or just in life. Like I, I said it to you at one point in the competition, I wasn't just trying to be an asshole, but I'm like, this is actually making you stronger. Like this is improving your ability to cope with pain and decide and make decisions about health versus performance and understand yourself better. What were like the big lessons that you're going to try to take moving forward as an athlete from the comp? I didn't really ask you this in I know, our well, actual consult. A, so now is, you're on the that, spot. Well, this is a deep question. <laughs> I think probably the biggest thing is I haven't done an individual competition like this in a while. So understanding that things won't go your way and how do you bounce back from it rather than like thinking all about that last workout. And I think for me, it was really hard to kind of bounce back from that. So learning like, hey, things aren't going to go your way and that's okay. And you just need to keep fighting through it. And so I think for me, just fighting through adversity and things not going your way. I think that's probably the biggest lesson that I learned over the weekend. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, honestly, just going in and giving like your best effort in every single workout um, and not being like, not thinking about outside external things. So mentally, I think there was some things I needed to grow on throughout the weekend. And I definitely learned uh, mentally one of the things like mentally I need to grow a little bit more. Yeah. Well, you were growing strong. Yeah. Basically <laughs> <laughs> growing stronger. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to start a, a, uh, stronger. Yeah, a grown yeah. stronger brand yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and have Travis. Have be Travis. Be it'll, be the mas it'll be the masculine. <laughs> yeah. The masculine. Yeah, yeah. 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 I like that. Speaking of masculine, did Max tell you that you made him cry? Did I really? I did tell you that. Well, yeah, yeah. I did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was like, yeah, she I was, was like, like so emotional and I was crying and Max was like, you're almost making me cry. Yeah. <laughs> I, I've never experienced that before. I don't know, maybe ever, but just, I was in the competition. I don't remember which event it was after. It was just yeah. like, I, it was obvious to see that the weekend was definitely not going according to plan. And yeah. there were some tough situations. There were some things in the, in the competition, some things, personal stuff, all that stuff was just, it was heavy stuff. And you had cried, I think almost after every workout. No, I think it was, it was after Saturday, the last workout. Cause I think finally we were just like kind of talking about the day and I, I cried after every single workout. <laughs> yeah. And then I was like, I'm sorry. I keep crying. <laughs> and then he was like, don't be sorry. You're almost making me cry. <laughs> yeah. And I teared up and I was like, that was strange. Uh, I talked, to, did I talk to you yeah. about it there? I yeah. mean, you haven't coached this many women before have you like at once definitely not at once yeah. and most of my female coaching roster was all remote and mm -hmm. not as competitive i mean i definitely have had some competitive regional level like and some very close re level regional misses but i think all of the females that we coached were all at the same competition at the same time it was just more emotion than i was yeah, used was to doing. <laughs> and then apparently too, Sandra was saying that she's super emotional as well, but you haven't seen it because she goes back she, to the hotel room and breaks down. That, that's <laughs> what I was wondering. I actually was wondering that. I was wondering if Akeem deals with that. Yeah. So yeah. She, I was like, because she's like, oh, don't worry. I cry as much as you do. And I'm like, but we haven't seen it yet. Yeah. She's like, oh, I go home after the gym and I just cry to Akeem or at like a competition she goes 
goes back to the hotel room and Akeem sees it all. And I'm like, well, Max really dealt with it with me. So it's good practice. <laughs> yeah. cause- I know your secrets now, Sandra. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, We're giving you good practice for when Sarah gets down here too. Yeah. Maybe. I was gonna she say, yeah, Sarah's not even here yet. Yeah. I don't know if she's a crier. Uh, I don't know. I don't know yet. Yeah, well, I'll find out. <laughs> you, I'll, be I'll well know. prepared. Yeah, I'll be experienced now yeah. to stand there and be like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I think it was kind of funny. The first time I, you had saw me cry was after, or the day we had done like a heavy clean bar muscle up workout. And I was completely just like, bawling after and I think for you you were like uh, uh you just like yeah. patted me on the side you like didn't know what to do yeah, I didn't <laughs> honestly that's been one of the biggest assets to having you as part of the coaching is that there was so many emotions I don't even know if I'm in touch with my emotions. <laughs> like I'm just like constantly just living and trying to figure things out that girls would break down and I'm like I'm so glad parents over there right now. Cause I have no idea what to do. I think there was, yeah, I was going to say there was one day it was like me, I was crying. Bryn was crying. Like everyone was crying. We were all just kind of in a corner, just like crying together. We went on a walk afterwards. Yeah. So we yeah, talked, yeah. You know, yeah. It's a, it's a stressful environment sometimes. And I think everybody has their ways of coping with it. And for some people just crying is a way to get it out. And I, I don't think there's anything wrong with it, but I I do think it's valuable to like have an outlet, but also in some sense kind of be able to like get yourself back to where you need to be. It's an interesting, this is, I'm not going to get like too scientific, but there was a Joe Rogan podcast with a Harvard biologist and they were talking about the differences between males and females. And she was talking about her authority as a professor and that some of the other professors challenged her because she's so emotional. So she'll just be teaching a topic and crying for no reason. (laughs) And she's scared that that is going to undermine her credibility. And in her adulthood, she's trying to learn how to deal with that. I do think there might be a difference because I don't know if it's like I'm callous to those emotions or just men, not all of them, but a lot of them are taught, especially through athletics, to internalize them, to not release them, to not show the people you're competing that you're in pain. And like, so we just create these like more callous control mechanisms, whereas females seem to naturally express them, like let them out so it doesn't erode them. It's probably actually a more healthy process. Yeah. Isn't that weird Maybe that water that's, comes out of our eyes? Yeah. Just well, and and it co- comes out with stress hormones. Like they've actually done research on the composition of tears that you can actually release stress physically through crying. So I'm going to learn how to do it. I'm going to show up to a competition (laughs) soon as an emotional wreck, just crying. (laughs) People are going to come back to me off the floor and I'm going to be crying. (laughs) Give me a hug. I would love to see that. (laughs) It was funny. One day, uh, it was me, Noah and Alexis. We were swimming and no Alexis and I were waiting in the hot tub for Noah to get there. He was like 30 minutes late. (laughs) So you're already done. Yeah. No, we weren't done with it. We were sitting in the hot tub waiting for Noah. So we were just like warming up and then Noah, he's like, comes into the hot tub and he like does a big sigh. He's like, <sighs> he's like, I'm just having a really emotional day. guys. <laughs> and he's like, I just want to cry, but it's not coming out. And then he was like, kind of everything that was going on with his kidney yeah, yeah. stones, with his shoulder. And he just basically vented to Alexis and I for like 10 minutes. He's like, thanks for making me feel better guys. <laughs> but I, I definitely think people need that. And especially as high level athletes, like you, We're talking to Noah a little about just nerves before a competition. And I think that's normal. Like, I I think everyone thinks that everyone shows up and they're ready to go and they're going to be a warrior. But I I do think the majority of people feel those things. And I I actually had an experience with Tracy, one of my master's athletes, her rookie year at the games, she was having a rough weekend and she got to the point where she felt no nerves, no emotion, and she was completely flat. And it just, and her performances from there were just the same way. It was flat. I've seen that happen to athletes a lot. Yeah. I actually, I probably get made fun of this. I had an emotion wheel that I got, I got like five posters of them. Oh, it's on the hallway. Yeah. Yeah. I think I got like five. Max, when you talk to Perrin, make sure you talk into that mic. There you go. (laughs) You'd think I've done this before. Um, and I, it's something that I recognize. I'm like, you know, emotions seem to be one of the things that gets in the way or helps high level performance. So how do we get better control of it? How do we stimulate them? Do like in those situations, 
Do you guys remember the movie A League of Their Own? Oh, yeah. Oh, great you do? movie. Great movie. No? It's a movie about a female baseball team, and Tom Hanks takes no over as the coach, and there's no crying, in, oh, and no crying in baseball. Yeah. And that whole concept is like, well, which which is better for performance? If you're in that moment and she's crying, like being compassionate or being like, stop crying. We're crying. <laughs> you just don't really know like what the actual way of like optimizing those things is. I guess we'll all learn it together. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> and then like, how do you train that? Because yeah. like some of those nerves and competition experiences, you can't train in the gym. Yeah. So is it okay? You just give them, you, you encourage them to, to do more competitions, to just see how many scenarios can I put myself in that I can adapt to some of these things that go bad, figure out how to maybe protect myself in a way where you can still stay like in the zone. Like I think for a lot of the struggles that you had, what we were trying to do and having, having conversations about was like, get you refocused. So it's like, okay, have the emotion. That's fine. But now you need to refocus because you still have three, four, five more events to go. I think you did a really good job of that. I mean, there yeah, were a lot of external variables and the, you know, it's, it's hard to, you know, critics will always say, you know, that people shouldn't talk about afterwards or make excuses about, you know, injuries or cause everyone's dealing with something, which I think is true, but everyone who's on that competition floor is also pushing themselves to their limits so they're all experiencing their limits, which most people don't actually understand because most people aren't pushing their physical limits for months and months and months at a time for this one moment. And that's a hard thing. Also, your uh, friend, I forgot his name, uh, Trevor, <clears throat> you sent me a, oh, a yeah. text message that said, the, me cry. <laughs> <you read> that? <laughs> the mental game that comes during game time always impresses me because it's very hard to train for. It's like fighters don't train with broken bones or blood coming down in their eyes when they can't see. There's just no way to really train for that. It's just hard. That's kind of how I feel about competing when you're not in a good state, mm -hmm. um, which I'm sure a lot of people go through, but it's a cool thing that I actually do think just grows people's resilience. Yeah. I definitely think that we learned a lot, like obviously from the past two months, but I think from the one weekend, I feel like you probably learned a lot about me. Parent learned a lot about me. And I think it's like, so great those learning lessons that we can then take moving forward that we wouldn't have learned if we didn't put ourselves in that position and didn't compete. So yeah, I mean, going into the final day, I'd even told you, I was like, I was to the point, I was like, I didn't even know like whether or not I could still like compete. And you're like, let's just go out there and learn from these like next two workouts. And I feel like we did. So yeah, um, yeah, it's all good learning lessons. So that's your whole story, start to finish. We yes. extended it. If if left up to you, we would have been done 30 minutes ago because you got it all out really know, quick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we tried to pull it out as long as we could. Chris, we got any other questions? Uh, actually, one thing I was thinking, out of your whole career, do you have a favorite event throughout the games, regionals, anything? Favorite event? I think 2014, the speed clean ladder. That was by far at the games. At the games, they had like it was multiple. It was like rounds multiple too, rounds. Right? Yeah. Like you literally, it was like five barbells, and you were basically the whoever was the fastest made it onto the next heat. So it was like bracket style or whatever. And I made it onto the last one with all the girls. That was just like so much fun. You don't get better than something like that. I think the crowd just loves heavy lifting yeah. and. The energy with that is like literally like no other in the tennis stadium. So yeah. definitely speed clean ladder. Mike had a really good point. We went to the, I think it was, yeah, we were sitting at Granite Games and he's like, you know, at a CrossFit event, they've never had the finale be a one rep max lift, but I think it would be cool to go through, like if you just took the Granite Games max snatch and instead of having it be the first event when everyone's fresh, you just move it to the end of the weekend yeah. and it's just, you got to lift to as get heavy in. as possible. Yeah, to get in. Wow, that yeah. would be it would be an, interesting. Yeah, it would be an interesting way to end a competition because yeah. it's almost always been, or not always, but at regionals, been like a short, fast sprint style yeah. workout. Or I think it would be boring to be like a 20 minute AMRAP yeah. to finish, but a lift might be a cool way yeah, to go out. Yeah, that would be a really cool way to go out. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways. Um, yeah, what's the station that plays all the hits? I still don't know here in Georgia. <laughs> where can people find you? Oh, where Grown can people strong. can find me? Yeah. Well, they can find my Instagram at Lauren Fisher. I also have my own website, lauren-fisher.com. Um, they can also learn more about my own personal brand, Grown Strong, at Grown Strong, and then grownstrong.com. What does Grown Strong do? 
Grown Strong is a company that empowers women to be strong and confident like in all aspects of life, not just physically, but mentally and emotionally. We offer fitness programming. Uh, we just came out with a new uh, GS Go timer. Um, super That's foods. the little magnetic timer? Yeah, Superfoods yeah. powder. And it's got the loudest beep in the market. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Superfood powder. So <laughs> basically, we want to give all the tools to help be successful in life. not So like a one-stop shop uh, for everything you need for your fitness needs. And we target women and empower them. And I think we have a really cool community. So that is what Grown Strong is all about. So if you want to learn more about it, head to grownstrong.com. Grown Strong, as Travis says. <laughs> um, and yeah, at Lauren Fisher. And, oh, thank you. And go in the comments and convince Lauren to come back as much as possible to train. Or convince me to move here. That too. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. Thank you.